What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 13 of Daz Radio. This week, we have super exciting news in NFTs, crypto, and Web3. What do you have for us this week, Mark? All right, so I'll be talking about what Goldman Sachs is doing in the wake of the FTX collapse. I'll be going on to talk about how Phantom is now multi-chain servicing more blockchains, how OpenSea is adding BNB support to their platform, how Uniswap is becoming an NFT marketplace aggregator, and finally, I'll finish up with how Polygon is going to partner with Warner Music Group for to make an NFT music platform. What do you have? Awesome, awesome. So this week, I'm going to be talking about Scott & Scott, a consumer rights company suing Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, people not going to drop NFTs on Solana and choosing a different chain. Uh, the Macy's Day Parade actually allowing uh, NFT floaties next year. And also Decentraland hosting an ugly Christmas sweater party, but the first virtual edition. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the first topic of the week. What do you have for us first? All right, so I'm going to start off talking about how Goldman Sachs has decided to just sort of go very heavily into crypto following the FTX collapse. So I don't want to talk about FTX itself anymore. I feel like that's all I see these days. But after prices have dumped so heavily for everything, they've announced that they're going to be pouring hundreds of millions into a bunch of different um, crypto ecosystems, which, I mean, for Goldman Sachs, that isn't that much, but it's sort of showing this trend, how a bunch of financial institutions are seeing this as the perfect opportunity to buy into crypto. And I'm thinking maybe it could be sort of the sort of the starting period for a more regulated age of crypto what do you think i don't know i think it's definitely bullish um if goldman sachs is investing in crypto right now that kind of is like an indicator you can use to say like kind of we've bottomed but um i'm not sure though i think there's going to be one more big leg down before we can call it a real bottom because uh personally i think solana can go as long as as low as six to eight dollars or even five dollars and still be fine um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't think we've bled out enough of the markets yet. Um, and e I think these people actually, I think they're actually a little bit quick to start investing because I don't think they're trying to time the bottom. More so, they're trying to keep good companies and good projects alive. So I mm -hmm. think for like VC type investments like that, it makes sense. But for um, investors like us or like retail investors, we should wait a little bit and then see how, how the market plays out. Because I think the, I think crypto winter is a little bit longer than people expect. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you have nothing else for us regarding that topic, I'm ready to take it on to the next. Awesome. So let's talk about how uh, Scott & Scott, a consumer rights company, is actually suing Yuga Labs. So we know Yuga Labs has been in the news recently because uh, they're with a lawsuit with the SEC. Uh, the SEC is actually working with Yuga Labs now to actually bring regulation to crypto and Web3. And uh, we know that SEC is not going to get Yuga Labs in trouble and that that lawsuit is more of to make sure they comply. So it's more of like a scare tactic to make sure they comply and they won't get in trouble. But now Scott & Scott, a consumer rights company, wants Yuga Labs to get in trouble because after doing an audit, um, they just see a continuous bleed of assets with little results to show for it. So they see that uh, Yuga Labs has minted out three, four collections and they've raised a significant amount of money. And for the significant amount of money, uh, they just have a metaverse that's still an alpha version. It's not even open to holders yet. So um, they, they, they haven't... The consumer rights company believes that Yuga Labs hasn't outputted enough uh, for the amount of money they've raised and that money is being spent in um, unreasonable fashion. So uh, they want this to be looked at by the SEC and they also want Yuga Labs and uh, their administrators to pay for it if there was any foul play done there. And this also um, comes at a time where Board API Club is 80% down on their investment. So um, I don't know. I don't think all publicity is good publicity. I think something like this can definitely bring them down even more. What do you think? I completely agree. I definitely don't think this could be considered any form of good publicity, but if they think Board Ape Yacht Club funds are just going to a bunch of bad places, I think they need to start making a list just going down every single big crypto project or every big NFT project and just writing down all their expenses because I know that Yuga Labs is not the only one. But unless you have anything more on that, I will move on to talk about how Phantom is now becoming cross-chain. So Phantom announced that they're going to support Ethereum and Polygon in addition to Solana, which I think is really, really cool. And they, when they announced this, they stated that Phantom was actually originally meant to be a Ethereum wallet. They had always planned to be multi-chain, but now they're actually just finally taking those steps. And they're going to be supporting both of these blockchains just to sort of get to a wider reach of people. They stated that they're going to be supporting Polygon just because there's so many different apps. There are a bunch of different NFT projects, and especially the gaming sector that's growing on Polygon they want to reach. So I just wanted to ask you, what do you think the implications are for Solana from this change? 
I saw on Twitter recently that a lot of people were getting mad that Phantom started implementing Ethereum. Uh, people think that this is going to like dilute the ecosystem. Uh, personally, I believe that um, cryptocurrency should be chain agnostic. I think the future of the metaverse is chain agnostic. I think there's going to be the metaverse and not like a metaverse on Solana and a metaverse on Ethereum. And I think um, more and more companies like Magic Eden, OpenSea, Fandom, they're all starting to become chain agnostic. So I think you really can't blame any of them because um, especially now in the bear market, uh, money is so like, there's not a lot of money to go around. So when you become chain agnostic, you can actually make more revenue as a company. So it makes sense why all of these big actors are becoming chain agnostic. And I also don't think cha being chain agnostic is necessarily a bad thing. Um, a lot of people on Twitter do believe that now a lot of money will be sucked out of Solana. But personally, I think a lot of people like me uh, who already use Phantom will just move their Ethereum onto Phantom now instead of using MetaMask. So I think there's both sides to the coin. And um, I think people are just fighting it unnecessarily. I think right now in the bear market, people on Twitter, my crypto Twitter is looking for anything to fight. They're just trying to fight anything and everything in sight. What, what do you think of this? Yeah, I agree. I don't really think this is a bad thing for Solana in any way, shape or form. To me, it completely makes sense that Phantom's sort of expanding their horizons. But what do you have for us next? So next, let's talk about how the Macy's Day Parade is actually going to allow NFT floaties next year. So if you guys don't know, here in the United States, the Macy's Day Parade is held at uh, New York City and is actually like a tradition here in the United States. So every single year, along with the Rose Bowl game, um, you can also expect the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving. So... Um, the next year's parade has actually gotten permission to allow NFT floaties. Now, these floaties are actually competed for like from Fortune 500 companies. So even getting the permission for like the NFT sector to be recognized and NFT floaties to be a thing is huge. And uh, right now, because there's not too many slots open, uh, we have seven projects competing for this. Um, among these projects are VFriends, Cool Cats, Subducks, Boss Beauties, and G Money. Um, and all these projects are trying to compete for a few floaties where they can demonstrate next year. And I think it's huge because uh, just getting a confirmed sign that NFTs will be around next year during the Macy's Day Parade, you'll see huge floaties um, based on NFT projects. I think that's just a reminder to show that even during the bear market, um, NFTs don't die. Because I think in when a huge NFT floaty is going to be floating through New York City a year from now, when maybe not a lot of people are that excited about crypto, um, I think it'll be a good reminder to serve that there will be a bull run coming soon and that NFTs are not dead yet. So I think that reminder is very, very necessary for uh, like mainstream. When like random people in New York City just see a floaty of an NFT project, they're far more likely just to invest in NFTs in general when 2025, 2026, uh, the bull run picks us up again. What do you think? I think that's really cool, I, especially like they're just becoming cemented in tradition. So even though that the um, the market's going down, everyone's you know crying and like all my assets are down and everything. I find it really cool that there's just something that, regardless of how bad things become, we're still going to have NFTs on the Macy's Day Parade. The footage from that will be around forever. So clearly, NFTs are going to be around to stay for a while. At least that's what I get from that. For sure, for sure. So without further ado, what do you have for us next this week? All right, so next I'll be talking about how OpenSea has decided that they're going to allow BNB support on their platform. So they're essentially just going to start allowing BNB NFTs to be listed on their platform. And they're really just doing this. This sort of brings me back to what we were talking about Phantom before. It's just a lot of these marketplaces and wallets are looking to become more chain agnostic. So by doing this, they're sort of opening their doors to what is now the largest smart contract blockchain in the world by daily active users. So I think this is a pretty big move by them. And I know that they've also recently added support for like avalanche based NFTs and Polygon. And they're just like sort of expanding in a bunch of different directions. But what I wanted to ask you about this is, do you think this is bullish for BNB NFTs or more specifically, do you think this will make BNB NFTs sort of a dominant player in the NFT industry? I'm not sure. BNB NFTs have been around for a long time, actually. Um, I remember we actually made a BNB NFT in like 2019 for Wall Street World, or was it 2020? I can't remember. But um, BNB NFTs have been around for so long. But the thing is, um, the dollar value of these NFTs, even the most expensive NFT on the Binance chain, is like a fraction, is like one hundredth of the most expensive NFT on the Ethereum chain. So like these NFTs trade at such low USD values that they never really come to light. Um, I, I can't I can't name any big uh, Binance projects that I think will be around in 20 years. Um, but I know recently they've had huge partnerships like with Ronaldo. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Personally, I don't think uh, 
Binance or Binance Smart Chain NFTs have had their light yet. Maybe the next bull run is when they really start to pick up. Maybe they'll get more sh light shine on. But even compared to Solana, I think uh, BNB NFTs are really, really not popular. I, I don't think they're popular at all. So as long as the dollar value of the most expensive NFT on a single chain remains low, I don't think anyone's going to go there to just to, to trade NFT. So I wouldn't really bet on the future of the Binance chain until the most uh, expensive NFT on the Binance chain it starts to worth over $100,000 or over $500,000. So once the most expensive NFT on any single chain nears the value of a million dollars, that's when I start to consider that chain itself relevant in the world of NFTs or whatever. But yeah, that's my two cents. Uh, do you have anything else to add on before we move on to the next article? Um, no, I just think there will be there will have to be another um, there will have to be another signal for BNB NFTs to become a big player. But what do you have for us next? So next, let's talk about how people will not be dropping NFTs on Solana. CEO of Metaplex, Stephen Hayes, came out saying that people will be dropping NFTs on Solana. Now, we were talking about the most expensive NFTs just a second ago, and the most expensive NFT on Ethereum is actually Human One made by people, which sold for $69 million. And uh, that's the most expensive NFT on Ethereum. And now when the most expensive NFT artist from Ethereum says he's going to come to Solana and create an NFT here, you can you can only imagine that's extremely, extremely bullish news. So when a CEO of Metaplex, which is the standard for Solana NFTs, comes out and says, yes, uh, we've been talking to people. He's going to release NFTs on Solana. Uh, this even impacted the Solana price and it actually jumped a few percent because of this news. Uh, but recently, the CEO Stephen Hayes came out to say that he just had a chat over Twitter with people and that he has to retract his statement because people actually tweeted out a thread in which he stated that he just simply asked questions about the Solana blockchain to Stephen Hayes uh, just to learn more about the chain and that he actually had no plans in the near future to create NFTs on Solana. So uh, definitely there was a broken telephone game there. Uh, there was some information leaked from based on assumptions. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think that there is more to the story than that. I think maybe someone changed their mind somewhere in there, or that just sort of not the entire story is being told. I would be very surprised if what he's saying is true, and that it's a fact that he actually was never even considering to launch on Solana. I think he was considering it for a while, and then changed his mind after hearing more recent news or learning more. But you mind if I... Yeah, recently... No, 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 just one last sentence. Recently on the news solana has been getting shot on so i wouldn't be surprised if he changed his mind last minute too after he mm -hmm. saw all the recent advancement with ftx and how they hold 12 percent or whatever what uh what do you have for us next all right so next i'll get started talking about how uniswap has decided to become an nft marketplace aggregator so essentially what this means is they're just going to consolidate nft trading from a bunch of different marketplaces all into ones so that you can just sort of go onto only uniswap's page and see listings from OpenSea, x2y2 looks rare pseudo swap larva labs x2y2 foundation just i already said x2y2 but they're just listing a bunch of different um marketplaces nfts on there and you'll be able to see which the lowest floor price for that particular collection is on. So you won't have to jump between like looks rare and open C to see if the collection you're looking into has a lower floor price. And this will sort of just make the whole NFT browsing experience just much easier for everyone. And so, but for the, some of the first joiners of this marketplace aggregator, they're going to be offering gas rebates just to sort of encourage people to come over and start using this platform. So I think it's pretty cool. I don't really see why people will decide not to gravitate over toward it at least for the browsing experience, because it just makes browsing so much easier, I think. Of course, it doesn't support Solana, so I don't think I'm gonna be using it any time in the near future, but I think it's really cool, and it's sort of giving me a glimpse of the future where NFT marketplaces are not just marketplaces, but more of aggregators where you can view listings from a bunch of different marketplaces. So do you think this will become used more than OpenSea, or how do you think this will compare? Um, wasn't this by OpenSea? Who is this by? This is Uniswap. Oh, Uniswap. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, is this a th Ethereum only? I'm not um, sure if you answered that. I think for right now, it's Ethereum only. It might have mm -hmm. Polygon. I'm not entirely sure. Honestly, I don't know. I'm too broke to trade Ethereum NFTs. But maybe someone in the audience knows. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, Ethereum NFTs, they start at like two grand, three grand, and that's the cheapest ones. So uh, I don't have too much experience trading Ethereum NFTs. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I actually don't know at all. If something like this came to Solana, I think I would say it's pretty helpful. But something like this already exists. I would say most Solana marketplaces now are aggregators. Uh, mm -hmm. Other than Magic Eden. Like, other than Magic Eden, if you go on the other uh, Solana marketplaces, you can see whatever's listed on Magic Eden, whatever's listed on SoulSea, all, all those at one place. Uh, but yeah, I think that's normal. I, 
whenever I see a project add on a feature, I always notice that others in the industry copy the same strategy. And I think that's normal in any industry. Um, yeah, I, I just see a lot of projects start doing this. I see a lot of marketplaces start to do this. And as soon as they do the strategy, I see a lot of marketplaces competing with them, copy, copy the same strategy. But yeah, that, that's all I have to say about that. Now, if you have nothing else to add, I have one final article for us this week. So let's talk about how Decentraland is hosting the first virtual ugly Christmas sweater party. So the cool thing is you'll actually be able to win some uh, tokens if you actually go onto this Decentraland on Monday, December 19th at 7 a.m. Central. Uh, if you log on and you created your own voxel style ugly Christmas sweater, uh, you'll actually be able to compete with other people that created their own voxel style Christmas sweaters. And whoever has the ugliest sweater will basically get a bunch of their native tokens. So I think this is I think this is cool. I think it's cool that they're having virtual events where anyone can attend. Uh, some of the cool things about this event is there is no sign up, so there is no RSVP. All you have to do is show up. So I think um, I, I'm actually super interested in events like that because then you know there is no catch. Like they don't even want to know your name. They just want you to log on with a wallet and just be there with as a random 16-digit character. So I, I think it's cool when there's no KYC and you can actually attend these virtual events just using just a browser wallet. What do you think? Yeah, I just love NFT events like that where they just they're really just encouraging participation. You don't actually need to like buy anything. You don't need to sign up, mm -hmm. give any information. They just are encouraging a bunch of people to come together and sort of just do something fun, like create ugly Christmas sweaters. So I, I love the idea that they're doing that and I think it's really cool. Do you have anything else you wanna say on that topic? No, that's it. Do you have anything else for us this week? I have one more topic for us this week. Awesome, so let's get it. We're gonna go at it with another Polygon partnership. This has become something we talk about like every episode at least once. So Polygon is partnering with Warner Music Group to create an NFT music platform. So I think this is pretty cool. And this is going to let artists put their record labels and release their music as NFTs on the platform. And this platform is actually set to launch in January. So it's coming out pretty soon, but it'll let everyone buy and own these music tokens. And I believe you'll actually be able to list your own records on it, which I find really, really cool. And they're partnering with yet another company called Spinnin' Records, which is the world's leading dance record label. So they definitely have some big names in there, and I'm wondering if this is going to be what really brings music NFTs into the industry. Do you think this will make music NFTs finally big? I'm not sure. I think Warner Brothers is huge for sure in the music industry, but uh, music NFTs have tried to come to light several times and failed. Uh, I, I know even Soulsea actually did a huge shift towards music NFTs, and uh, so far they haven't had big luck with it. And I think the main reason for that is, especially with music, you need some of these huge A-list mainstream artists to hop on and uh, them releasing an a song is exclusively as an NFT or something. Because until something starts become exclusively an NFT, um, I don't even think there's any merit in using an NFT at all. Because um, I think the music industry kind of has it figured out. They kind of have uh, avenues through which they can do distribution. But um, yeah, I think, I think until we see A-list artists release NFT exclusive items, uh, music NFTs won't really take off. That's just my personal take. Mm. Um, but... I do have to add this one last thing. I do think indie artists do have a huge space in uh, NFTs. Um, you, you actually have a friend who is a really good uh, musician slash artist, and I was recommending him to actually hop on and try to sell NFTs because one thing I've noticed in this uh, indie artist group is if you're like a small artist and you want to sell one of one NFTs, uh, as long as you make good quality content, you can easily sell it between like 200 to a thousand dollars. That's not an issue. The issue is only if you want to be like people and sell something that goes to a million dollars or to 69 million dollars. Um, then it becomes an issue and you need strategy and stuff like that, right? But if you're just a young creator or if you're just a solo creator, uh, I think one of one NFTs is a great way to get started because you'll get a whole set of audience looking at you that you otherwise wouldn't on a platform like apple or like spotify or whatever mm -hmm. because people in the nft space they actively look out and try to buy nfts so um i think it's definitely a market you can tap into uh do you have anything else to add i know i know you might have to add something about the nfts and the music nfts i just wanted to say i think we're just going to need a few really big players just to come into this marketplace and just bring in a lot of traction and after that i completely agree that indie artists might actually have a very solid chance to start bringing in revenue through a marketplace like this but Beyond that, I don't know enough about music NFTs to really go in depth about it, but unless you have anything left for us this week, I will wrap us up. Thank you everyone for tuning in for this episode of Dawes News. We will see you next time.